All right, last question. Uh, number eight, standpipes access will be where? So standpipe access will be where? So for this one, let's take a look at uh, our neighborhood image. So, all right, uh, first thing we have to remember is what is a standpipe, right? A uh, standpipe is a couple of different ways that a standpipe can be uh, considered. The, the word can mean a couple of different things. Uh, but in general, in a context like this, when you say standpipe, you're probably talking about something that's part of the fire protection system. So imagine you're a firefighter and you're coming to the building uh, in a presumed emergency. Uh, people are streaming down the stairs to get out of the building. You're running into the lobby and getting ready to go up into the building. You figure out where you need to go using the enunciator panel or whatever information uh, the security system has. Uh, you are about to run up to say the third or fourth, let's say the third floor. Uh, and you could take a fire hose, plug it into a uh, fire hydrant in the street, let that hose fill up, and then run with the hose up the stairs to the third floor or fifth floor or seventh floor or whatever it is. But that would be kind of ridiculous, right? First of all, it would be unbelievably heavy. Uh, but second of all, you're going to be getting water all over the place and water is going to be slippery and people are trying to get out in a panic and all of that. Uh, and you also have this big, thick hose that's now up in the stairwell and people are tripping over it when they're trying to get out. You're actually going to cause more damage and more injury than you're going to be helping. So what can you do? Well, use a standpipe. So the standpipe is going to be a pipe that's going to go vertically through the building and it's going to reach out to the sidewalk and it's going to be a spot where I can connect to it so a firefighter can run up to the building, connect to a hydrant and to the standpipe, <clears throat> excuse me, so that they are charging with the pressure from the hydrant, they are charging that standpipe, filling it with water, and then the firefighters can run up the stairs with an empty fire hose, uh, and then uh, at the floor that they think the fire is, they can come out of the stairs and tie into the standpipe at that point. So now uh, they have a full connection of a fire hose coming all the way from the hydrant to the standpipe, up the standpipe, to the fire hose again, and they can fight the fire on that floor. So the standpipe is sort of becomes a part of the fire hose, if you will. Uh, it's an incredibly useful tool. Uh, the standpipe would normally be near the stair, sometimes in the stair, because you don't want the firefighters trying to figure out where the hell it is, right? They wanna, they wanna know exactly when they get to that floor, they come out, it should be right there for them. Uh, so it has to be easy for them to use and find. Uh, and that's sort of a sort of typical idea of how a standpipe works. It could also be that you have a standpipe that's tied into the sprinkler system. Maybe it's just there to provide more pressure. So it would be the same basic idea. It would tie in from a uh, pumper truck or from a hydrant. Uh, you would uh, you know, shoot water into that standpipe. But then instead of it being for direct firefighting with a fire hose, it would be uh, adding extra pressure or even any water. Sometimes you have dry systems and it might fill the whole system in uh, so that the sprinkler system could then start to work. So th there's a couple of other ways you might use the term, but they're all basic versions of something like that, where you are uh, taking pressure from the uh, fire hydrants or pumper trucks or the, something along those lines from the fire department, uh, and you are pressurizing in order to fight a fire uh, into the building in some sort of useful, simple way. So, okay, uh, let's take a look at some of our answers and we'll come back to our site plan. So the answers are the east side of the site, um, typical cleanouts uh, will be at uh, each uh, direction change. Yeah, that's not, doesn't have anything to do with uh, standpipes. Uh, facing the sidewalk, well, that's possible. So we, so far we have east side of the site and facing the sidewalk. And then D, rooftop connection to the RTU, the rooftop unit for mechanical. Yep, that's not what a standpipe is doing. Uh, so it's either A or C, east side of the site, or C, facing the sidewalk. So let's take a quick look again. East side of the site is going to be right there along an alley, just a few feet away from a bunch of residential buildings. There's really no way that that would be the spot that you would connect. You're not anywhere near where the hydrants are, 
It'd be very difficult for the uh, fire trucks to sort of pull into that very small alley. It's guaranteed that it's going to be somewhere near uh, the front of the building on the main sidewalks. So it could be on the north side. It could be on this north uh, uh, northwest side. It could be on this southwest side. Uh, it potentially could be over here, but only if you knew exactly what was going to be built uh, next door. So the answer to this one can't be uh, to the east side because it just doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely going to be facing to the sidewalk uh, because the firefighters need to be able to have quick and easy access to this. Uh, sometimes with the standpipe, the connections, you'll see that they have uh, they break into two or even four or five different heads, and that allows people, allows the firefighters to connect to a hydrant, but then also they need more pressure. They can connect to a pumper truck. They can get multiple things going. You'll also see, literally have a little sign on it that says, this is for direct firefighting, or this is for a sprinkler system, or for whatever it actually is for. So answer to the eight, C, facing the sidewalk. All right. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't look like anybody got them all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough one. And so, uh, some of these, you know, uh, we're just kind of taking our hand, testing out these different ideas. Uh, you know, they're not, these are not necessarily going to be uh, exactly like the questions are on, uh, uh, on the exam. So don't, don't fret about it. Uh, we're really using this just as a way, a tool uh, to talk about the way that these things uh, work, not so much the specifics of that. So don't worry about it if you didn't get them all. Still good. Cool. All right. Um, so thank you, Mike. Uh, thanks to all of you who have tuned in and uh, submitted their questions today. As I mentioned earlier, uh, our next ARE Live uh, session is going to be a special one. It'll be live and in person here at Black Spectacles offices at our 1871 uh, spot here in the Merchandise Mart. We'll be collaborating with Mike and our friends at AI Chicago's Young Architects Forum, featuring three young architects who are taking different approaches to ARE 5, ARE 4, and somewhere in between. We'll be having free drinks, food, some giveaways. If you want to save your seat, register for free at bksp.es slash ARE Live dash RSVP. As I said, um, seats are limited, so um, it'll be on a first come, uh, first serve basis. And for those of you who uh, uh, aren't going to be hopping on a plane to come join us uh, in person. We'll be broadcasting live as usual, so you can register at blackspectacles.com slash podcast. Um, to learn more about our ARE uh, exam prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com, um, where uh, you can try out any of the free course videos. And for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the ARE, and if you're already an AIA member, you can use coupon code 92816PDDYT, that's P is in Paul, D is in dog, D is in dog, YT, um, to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your ARE exam prep membership. Finally, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think. Share any suggestions you may have. I promise we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.